Let's talk lavalier microphones, lav mics. I think a lav mic is something that most creators should carry in their camera bag. It's one of these little microphones that you can uh, clip onto your shirt. It's very small, doesn't take up much space in your camera bag, and it can make a big difference. Uh, let me give you an example. I was just watching a video by this couple who is doing a review of a resort. And so they're at this resort, they're in their hotel room, and evidently they had set up their camera six or eight feet back, and the two of them were sitting there discussing their uh, time at the resort. And the audio in that video was not very good. It really sounded echoic and reverberant. You could hear the sound of the room very clearly. So it was pretty obvious that they were using the mics that were built into their camera. Or maybe they had a mic on top of their camera. But that mic was just too far away from them to get a very good, clear audio pickup. And I'm sure that hurts the performance of their video when you don't have very good sounding audio. That um, tends to drive people away. And I was thinking it would be so much better if they had a different microphone setup. Now, ideally, I would give each of them a studio microphone right in front of them that they're talking into, and that would be great. Or secondarily, I would put up a studio microphone above the two of them just off frame on a boom pole, and that would be great. But there are lots of situations where you just can't haul around that much equipment. It's not practical. But they could have easily just tossed a little lav mic into their bag and brought that with. And if they had used a lav mic, their video would have been so much better because it would have had clean, clear dialogue without all of that room echo. Now, this mic that I have right here, this lav mic, is a Audio-Technica. And I've had it for quite a while. I think it works really well. And it's not very expensive at about $30. And so if you're interested in this sort of thing, I'll put a link down below where you can check it out and get one for yourself. Now, I don't think that $30 is a lot of money to get the kind of gains that you get from having a lav mic. But for some people, $30 is $30. And for some people, well, they just enjoy doing stuff themselves. And so I'm going to share with you how you can build your own lav mic for just a few dollars. I would suspect certainly under $10. I think I've got about $3 into the one that I built. Now you might ask, well, how good can a $3 microphone be? Well, you tell me, because you're listening to it right now. Building your own lav mic is super simple, because all we need to do is get a microphone element and attach a wire to it, and attach a appropriate plug on the end of that wire to go into your recorder. And that's it. So you might be wondering, well, where do I get a microphone element? Well, the most popular microphones in the world probably aren't the microphones that you see on stage or in studio. They're these little tiny circuit board mounted microphones that are used inside of other devices, like the microphone that's inside of the camera, or microphones that are inside of phones, or maybe the mics that are inside of a voice assistant by Amazon or Google. These are little tiny microphone elements that are designed to be put onto a circuit board. And they're relatively inexpensive at just a few dollars a piece, usually. And how good are they? Well, I wouldn't say that they are professional microphone quality, but they're not too bad. With the advent of modern engineering and modern manufacturing, we can manufacture pretty decent microphones for very low money. Now, of course, different products have different levels of performance. And so not all miniature microphone elements are going to be fantastic. Some will be great, some will be not quite as great. Now the one that I chose was a Panasonic WM61. And I chose that one because it had a reputation for having particularly good sound quality. And unfortunately, that part is now discontinued. 
You can still find them in the marketplace occasionally, but fortunately there are plenty of other parts out there that will also work well. And so I'll put some links down below for where you can find some of these microphone elements. So if you're comfortable using a soldering iron and doing some minor electronic soldering, you can put together your own lav mic for just a few dollars. Now, you might be curious how well this lav mic works in comparison to a commercial product. And so I'm going to disconnect this one right now and I'll put up the Audio-Technica mic and you can hear the difference. One moment. Okay, so now you're listening to me with the Audio-Technica lav mic. I do think that this is a better sounding mic. It's got enhanced high frequency response and it's a little bit more clear sounding. But of course, it's also multiple times the price. And my personal opinion is that if you need a lav mic, the most practical and reasonable thing to do is to just buy a lav mic like this Audio-Technica or something similar. Because it's all done for you. It's got a nice high quality clip attached to it. It's just an easy, simple solution. But if you want to save some money, if you like building something yourself, let's take a look at how you could put together your own lav mic for just a few dollars. So here is the home-brewed lav mic. It's extremely simple. As you can see, I just have a alligator clip that I soldered onto a, a paper clip right here and bent it around to act as a clamp so you can clamp it onto your clothing. And I put a little bend in here so that when you clip it onto your clothing, it keeps the microphone element off of your shirt so it doesn't rub on your clothing. The element is right here. It's uh, that Panasonic WM61 element, um, although it, that's not unique. You, there's plenty of them like that. And I just soldered a wire onto it, and then I covered the whole thing up with just a little bit of heat shrink tubing to keep it all together and keep it neat looking. This wire I scrounged from the dollar store from a pair of iPhone headphones. And on the other end, we have a tip ring sleeve connector which provides the connection to your recorder from the microphone. Now since this is a mono microphone I have ground attached to the sleeve and the tip and ring are both connected to the plus side of the microphone element and that's all it is. So let's take a look now at the Audio-Technica version and see how they did it. As you can see, it's pretty much similar, except that they have a much nicer clothing clip on their mic than the alligator clip that I fabricated with a uh, paper clip. I have a small foam windscreen on this one, which is probably a good idea, and that will just slide right off. And as you can see underneath the windscreen, it's just a pretty similar small little condenser microphone element with a wire attached to it. And that's all we got. Then on the other side, the Audio-Technica unit has the same three and a half millimeter plug, which is a tip ring sleeve plug. And again, the audio signal is applied to tip and ring. It's a mono signal, same on both of those and the sleeve is ground. Now one thing that they do differently than the home brewed device is that you'll see they have an inline battery right here and this contains a watch battery to energize the microphone capsule and there's a little power switch on it so you can turn the battery off when it's not in use. Uh, the battery lifetime is extremely long. These capsules hardly draw any power at all but they just need a little bit of energy in order to operate. Uh, this also has a belt clip on it so you can clip it onto your clothing so it doesn't flop around. Now since the do-it-yourself mic does not include this battery pack, it depends upon your recorder to provide DC power to the microphone to actuate the capsule. And this is sometimes referred to as plug-in power. And lots of recorders 
phones do provide plug-in power. So most of the time, the homebrewed microphone will work just fine. If you need to provide power to your microphone element because your equipment doesn't provide plug-in power, well, that's an easy circuit modification, and we'll talk about that. Now, another thing that comes with the Audio-Technica microphone that is a nice feature is this adapter right here. Now, this adapter allows you to plug the microphone into an iPhone or a standard phone because it has a plug on it, which is a TRRS plug. You've got tip, ring, ring sleeve. And that's because phones provide the ground. They provide a microphone input signal, mono, and left and right outputs for headphones. And so on the phone side here, what we're going to have is the microphone signal, ground, and then headphone signals right and left. And then on the other side of this adapter, we have two 3.5 millimeter jacks, which would be a breakout for your headphones and for a microphone. So this is an adapter to go into a TRRS four conductor jack on a device with TRS, tip ring sleeve, plugs on the other side, which would be a standard headphone plug or the plug coming off of your microphone, so it breaks that out. So if you're going to use your lav mic with a phone, this is a handy adapter to get. And like I mentioned, if you get the Audio-Technica product, it comes with this adapter. Here we have a close-up of the bottom side of the microphone capsule. This is the Panasonic WM61. If you choose a different capsule, well, it might be slightly different, but it should be very similar. Now, as you can see, there are two pads where we make our wire connections, and we just need to solder our wires to those two pads. The pad that's on the right-hand side of your screen, you can see that there's a tab that connects it to the outer casing of the capsule. So that's our ground side. So you'll connect your ground wire to that terminal pad. Then the other pad is the signal, and so you'll connect your one or two signal wires from your cable to that pad. And that's all we need to do. Now, I had mentioned earlier that these microphone capsules require a small amount of DC energy applied to them to make them operate. And in the case of the Panasonic capsule, it's not really critical exactly what the voltage is. They'll operate from about one to three volts of DC applied. And a lot of equipment, portable recorders and cameras and so forth, do provide what they refer to as plug-in power to power these sorts of microphones. And so good chance you can just plug this directly into your camera or your recorder and it will work just fine. But some equipment doesn't provide plug-in power and if that's your case, we need to apply a little bit of DC energy to this in order to make the capsule work. And so all we need to do is to connect a battery between those two pads. And so we would connect the negative side of the battery to the negative pad off on the right side and the positive side of the battery goes to the left hand pad, which is a signal output. That battery could be something like a triple A battery or perhaps a watch battery. These capsules draw very, very little power, so it doesn't require any significant amount of battery. Now, we probably don't want to apply that DC energy right into your recorder. So instead of applying your signal line directly to that left pad, we would connect a capacitor to the pad and then the signal line on the other side of that capacitor. So your signal goes through a capacitor, which is about a one microfarad capacitor, to the signal pad on the left side. The ground goes to the ground pad and you have a battery tied between those two pads. And that should get you hooked up and you should be able to create your own do-it-yourself lav microphone. So I hope you found that interesting. If you're not deterred by doing a little bit of electronic soldering, you've got an extra 15 minutes 
and just a few dollars, you can build your own lavalier microphone. Now, I would advise that you just purchase the Audio-Technica microphone or something similar, but you can fabricate your own mic and it's effective. I'm using it right now, in fact. And so if you pursue this project, I wish you well, and I'd be curious. So drop a note down below as to what your experience was if you decide to go ahead with it. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy this kind of content, I would appreciate it if you take a quick moment and subscribe to the channel because that helps the YouTube statistics and helps promote this content to more people. And it also helps you get back to this channel at a future date. If you do subscribe, I also suggest that you click that bell icon for notifications so you're notified when new content appears. Talk to you again soon and I'll see you on another upcoming video.